What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today we're gonna to be looking at a uh, specific uh, gene topic, and that is incomplete dominant, dominant, recessive genes, and three specific ones that were, are different localities, but seem to be situated on the same allele, which is the same position on the genes, or the DNA strand. So if your genes are located on the same, what we call locus, or position, and theoretically, they could potentially be the same gene, or they could just be a gene that's very similar that just happens to be allelic to the other gene. And that those three genes we're going to be talking about are leopard, onyx, and the black gene. The black gene being from Costa Rica, onyx being from Honduras, and of course, the leopard gene being from Mexico. So we're going to take a look at the, the differences, what makes them the same, and how we could differentiate them based on locality because locality where they're located really says a lot not necessarily about how they look but about the size of the snake so like the honduran ones seem to be smaller those are what i call the super dwarf boas whereas the mexican leopards are much bigger and then of course you have the costa rican black boa which a lot of people don't even realize is allelic to um, leopard and onyx and those are kind of in between size wise should you mix them? Should you not mix them? That's up to you. Let's take a look and, and see what we got. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about three genes that are essentially very similar genes. They're just what we call locality genes. So two, the three genes we're talking about are going to be leopard, onyx, and the black gene. Now, there's been so much debate over the years about are these genes the same gene? I don't necessarily know if they're the same exact gene. They seem to produce the same phenotype. Or what, when, I, when we say phenotype, we say what a snake looks like. And these genes definitely all happen to fall on the same allele. That means they are on the same location on the genes. Leopard, onyx, and black. Okay, now onyx boas are the really super dwarf locality dwellers, uh, boas from Honduras. And these Honduran boas, stay very, very small. And the onyx boa is an incomplete dominant uh, trait. Uh, in the single form, it has a certain look. Uh, striped tail, it's darker than normal. Uh, saddles look a little different. And in the homozygous or super onyx form, it's basically a, almost a patternless looking snake. Um, here is a um, really nice looking onyx boa, which is not really an onyx boa. I tricked you guys. This is a, uh, a mystique boa, which is an onyx leopard combination, allele combination. And it's one copy of the onyx gene, one copy of leopard gene. And it creates this patternless snake. It almost looks like a super onyx. Why? Because they're allelic to each other. Leopards come from Mexico. Onyxes come from Honduras. And the black boa comes from Costa Rica. And so if you have two copies of black gene, you have a basically a very dark looking snake. If you have two copies of leopard gene, you have a pretty dark snake. If you have two copies of onyx, you have a pretty patternless dark snake. They're pretty much very similar genes. The only difference is that they're a different locality. So the onyx boas are the smallest. I call them the super dwarfs because they're that locality in, in Honduras. These snakes just grew up probably with scarcity of food and the smallest ones survived. In uh, Costa Rica, okay, they also are very small. They're not quite as small as the Honduran ones, but they're also small, but they have a gene that's similar. They call it the black gene. Um, and if you mix one copy of the black, if you have two copies of the black gene, you're gonna have a very dark, solid snake. When you have two copies of the leopard gene, you produce the, the leopard pattern. And this is a leopard with motley and produces a very, almost like dark black snake. The key to understand this is that they are very similar genes and they do appear to sit on the same allele. We know this, we know this for a fact. The confusion comes when people don't understand the fact that we call leopard a recessive trait while we call the black gene and the onyx gene incomplete dominant. The truth of the matter is that they're really all three of them are incomplete dominant because in their single gene form, whether it be het leopard, het, uh, onyx, one copy or black gene, they all show some sort of discernible difference, meaning that you can identify them. That, that would include leopard. 
So leopard really should be considered an incomplete dominant gene. When you have two copies and you create a homozygous form of, of them, you get the true, I guess you could say, your two gene look to the animal. You want to call that recessive? I don't think it's recessive. I think it's incomplete dominant. And then you have a super form or the homozygous form of the animal. And the reason why they must all be incomplete dominant, all three of these genes, is because they're allelic to each other. Okay, so we have three incomplete dominant genes. They should really reclassify leopard at this point. We know that it's not recessive. There's, you can absolutely see leopard in its single gene form. You can tell they have bow tie saddles. Most of these, all three of them actually have like bow tie saddles, but the leopards really have the bow tie saddles. And they're definitely darker and they it definitely has a different look to the pattern. You can see a het leopard for sure. Very identifiable. The way you can identify a onyx and the way you can identify a black gene. The confusion came, I think, because the black gene was called the black gene because when you mix it with motley, it produced this dark black animal, similar to these two guys. Why is that? Well, when you put motley with one copy of any of these genes, whether it be onyx, leopard, or black, you produce a solid black snake that is striped. Okay, it's not solid like this snake or this snake. It's solid in the sense that, well, this one, this one's actually got more fun. It's not solid like this. It's solid with a stripe down its side. And that's because any of three of those genes with motley creates a striped snake. When you have a super form of either leopard, onyx, or the black gene, and you mix it with motley, you get a, a solid black snake with no pattern, with no striping on it. And so... This is where the confusion occurs. So the confusion occurs, number one, because people think that leopard is, is, is recessive and they don't understand how a recessive can interact with an incomplete dominant. Truth is, it's not really recessive. And the second mistake that people make is that they see that this one copy of black gene combined with motley and you get a solid black snake, even though it has a stripe, people don't understand what, what's going on with that. It's just because motley, when it interacts, creates a, a super-like form. And I know a uh, Frank Nutt calls the onyx motley combination the sumaton indicate like a super motley onyx combination it's not that difficult though and i'm going to put pictures up on what i'm talking about when i'm when i'm explaining this i just want people to understand that sometimes we make mistakes okay when we classify genes as recessive or incomplete dominant and the truth of the matter is that the leopard was always classified wrong and a lot of top boa breeders would, would probably agree with the fact that they are incomplete dominant they're really not recessive it's just by convention everyone thinks recessive to get that real true leopard form but the the het form of, of leopard is discernible phenotypically meaning you can look at it it looks different and that's why it should be considered an incomplete dominant gene doesn't change anything about how the genetics work or anything like that it's just it is a fact it also is, this is a good lesson on understanding how localities work. So is onyx and leopard the same gene? Maybe, but it's, it certainly has a different locality. So if you like super dwarf small snakes, the onyx and super onyx bow is going to be the way to go because the Honduran bow is the tiniest boas that are out there. Um, if you like a slightly bigger version, you go with a leopard because leopards are bigger. They're Mexican boas. If you want something in between, you go with Costa Rican black boas. The black gene is kind of in between the onyx and the leopard. Can you cross the two together? Absolutely. Should you? That's up to you. They're allelic to each other. I have a, a mystique right here in my hand. This is a onyx leopard. They're beautiful. But once you mix them, they're no longer pure locality anymore, and they're not going to stay at the size level that, like, this is not going to stay as small as a Honduran. Superonyx is going to stay. It'll be small, but it's not going to be quite as small. So if you want to keep your localities pure so that you know what the size is going to be, then I suggest keep onyx with onyx, keep black gene with black gene, and all the Costa Rican morphs, because there's a Costa Rican D positive that you can put in there too, and then keep your leopard stuff separate as well. If you don't care and you like the crossover, mix everything. Who cares? There's no rules, guys. It's only what you want and what you like. As long as you, when you sell these snakes, you tell people what you're producing and what they're buying from you accurately, then there's no, there's no harm done. If you want to keep things pure, I have pure onyxes. I'll never mix with anything but other than Honduran, you know, and, and Central American genes. That's, you know, that's my decision. Um, did I, I wanted to prove that these things were allelic to each other, so I produced this onyx 
leopard, which, which is called the mystique. And I love it. And I'll, and, but if I sell it, I'm going to sell it as a mystique. And I'm going to tell people what the genes are that are in here. And that's all that's important is full disclosure. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson on the leopard onyx blockchain and hope that clarifies in your mind a little better what's going on. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Um, I hope you weren't confused by this uh, explanation of these three genes, the onyx, the leopard, and the black gene. Hopefully I clarified a little bit. You know, nomenclature, which is the, the names we give things and how we define things is always changing. And you can't, just because leopard has always been conventionally a recessive trait, doesn't mean necessarily that it, that's what it is. It seems, you know, by all the evidence we have to be in complete dominant. You can see the phenotype changes in its single gene form, even though we don't consider that leopard, we only consider that het leopard, when you mix a het leopard with a motley, you get a, a, a solid animal that's striped. It does the same thing in onyx. It does the same thing in the black boa gene, in the black gene. So these genes all operate exactly very similar to each other. They're all, there's a couple nuances that they look a little different, especially in their single gene form. But really the difference and what to me makes them valuable is their locality. I love the Honduran onyx boa morph because they're so small. They're what I call super dwarfs. So if you stick with the Honduran T positive, the hypo from Honduras, the onyx gene, you're gonna get super tiny snakes that breed really small. And you've seen some of the snakes I've bred this season with that Honduran T positive and the onyx and the motley gene. So that's what it's all about. If you want a slightly bigger snake and you like leopard, you do leopard. If you like the Costa Rican locality and you wanna stick with Costa Rican T positive and black boa, a black gene, then you can do that or you can mix them. It's up to you, but just make sure, like I said in the video, you tell your customers where they're from. If you want purebreds, you stick with purebreds. If not, you don't. Hey, there's Logan. How you feeling, Logan? Good. Okay. You have a good time at school today? Yeah. yeah we were just talking about black gene, onyx gene, and leopard gene. And I know, I heard you. You heard me, okay. <laughs> He's not that interested though. All right, guys, um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up, reach out to me. If you want to get involved in any of these projects, let me know. I'm not involved in the Black Gene project, but someone had reached out to me yesterday, uh, one of my um, the guys I'm in contact with, and he had he really didn't understand the Black Gene. And I reached out to my good friend, Warren Booth, who clarified what I kind of already knew. Uh, I always like to get a, a professional PhD's opinion on this, and uh, I greatly value Warren's um, opinion. I know Warren is trying to breed exclusively the black gene with the Honduran teapot, excuse me, with the Costa Rican tea positive to keep them as, as pure as possible. So uh, if you're looking to get into that locality, you can reach out to him. If you want any onyx stuff or leopard stuff, obviously I have that as well. And there's a lot of other great breeders out there as well that have that stuff. But for now, you know what to do. We are out of time. Uh, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.